right, this is the, uh, my new sax. It's an alto. I'll open it up for you. A ratty case. I hate the case. So you guys are the first to see it other than my Snapchat, which I doubt many of you are on, and my, uh, and one of my good friends, I sent it to first. So here's the American Artist stencil of a Martin, a Martin handcraft. So we'll go over that. It's got a gold wasp bell, which I love. Let's start with the neck. Here's the neck. You know, it's, uh, it's got to be recorked. I have some tech cork from, Mus from Music Magic that I really like. It's pretty thick, so I'll have to sand it down. So I'm recorking it, and then this... <laughs> this thing. Who did this? Why did they do this? What, what, what was the point of this? Um, <laughs> the octave key now has to be redone. So this is from like the 20s, I think 1929 or something. So it's got a story. Let's see if I can zoom in. Nice. I can. Look at that focus. So the action on this octave key is kind of Focus? Are you stupid? There we go. The action on this octave key is kind of wonky, but you know, I'll get a new spring and fix it. Here's the mouthpiece. Drop that leg. It's a Martin. You know, Martin is the brand that this company is made to stencil of. The mouthpiece looks better in person, I promise you. It does not look like so tarnished and yucky. That's from the ligature, I think. These dual screw ligatures always. Yeah, look at that. Ugh. Dual screw ligatures always suck, in my opinion. You can... There's a few good ones from, like, Van Doren and Rico, but generally they're kind of cheap, and they... You can tell. Focus. There we go. Let's get the sax out. Alright. So, first off, the end cap is what I like. It's metal. Do you never get it. It's always plastic now, which is really interesting. I'll give you just a side view of the horn. Focus. So, 1929 stencil. You can see this mess. I think it's leftover polish. The guy that did this last did not do a very good job cleaning up after himself. So it's kind of playable. I mean, once I show you the whole thing, you'll see why it's not playable that much. But again, I didn't buy this expecting it to be playable. I bought it expecting to work on it and have a project horn that I liked. I actually don't have an alto. I have a tenor, I have a $300 berry that I bought, used, and it's a 1954 Prof Orsi student model, you know, it uh, quote-unquote plays. I'll have to show you guys that sometime. It's it's so gross, I really hate it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I hate that berry, dude. It's like green almost from all the oxidation. And I bought it before I knew anything about, like, repairing, which I still don't know anything about it, so... I think I'll get the alto out of the way first. A good project horn. You can see this leftover polish, and I'm rambling a little bit, but it's all cool. It's all cool, man. You got this kind of a uh, spongy action on this. It doesn't go back down, so again, it needs a new spring. Focus! <clears throat> Sorry for the random noises. <clears throat> Excuse me. My goodness. I just had a steak and potatoes, so it's pretty good. No pearl on the um, thumb rest. I kind of want to put some cork on it. I think that's really cool, actually. Putting some cork on it. If this thing would focus, it'd be awesome. So, you know, side view. Get a real nice look at all this. Um, you see there's no pad in this cup, and these pads are all shot. It's from, like, 1929, so, I, you know, I expect it. I'm going to replace all the posts. No, what am I talking about? I'm going to replace all the screws, the springs, and of course the pads. There's the serial number. I don't think that's going to do anything. Um, the ergonomics, it feels pretty good, I think. Kind of clicky because old springs, and I'll have to learn how to adjust it. The main reason I'm doing this is because it's kind of expensive to uh, go to a repairman and, ha and have them do it. And it's just going to be fun to learn, especially as a saxophonist. Not a great one, but you know, as a saxophonist, you want to learn how to do this. Okay. Hear that clang on the low C sharp? 
would be flat works. Let's see. I have it in my hand. I haven't played the thing. I've blown through it and I've played. Try to play it. I can get B, C sharp, no A. Because anything under A, you know, there's no pad in the A key. Or I guess C key if you think of it like that. And all the others are completely shot. Focus. Ew. Yuck. There's some solder on that tone hole, which is kind of gross. But yeah, here's my horn. I'm so excited to work on it. And I'll let you guys, I'll give you guys an update when I finish it. In about probably two months, because I'm still in school right now. This summer I'll get it. I have a job, but I'm only working Wednesdays, because, you know, I'm never free. I have so much schoolwork going on. Nice horn, though, really. Beautiful horn, and with a lot of love and some, I guess I'll just tell you the price. 230 because I lowballed the guy. Not really lowballed, he was asking 250 and I was like, shipping's 30 so why would I pay that? So I paid 230 and then shipping was 35 so it was, ended up um, 265 I think, plus tax. Um, pads will be 115 Springs and screws and all the miscellaneous stuff. I expect to buy, you know, I have two things to contact some in, but I'm sure that's not going to be enough. Because one of them's stuck and one of them's used, so. You know, pretty, pretty proud of the horn. Just wanted to show you guys. Doing an all-in-one take, because real men are afraid of the time it'll take to say this all again. Yes, sir, boy. All right. See you guys.